Wow. As a duo, Paul Newman and Robert Redford are best known for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, at least in part because Redford really latched onto that whole Sundance thing. But the other movie they made together, The Sting, was a bigger hit and won more Oscars, including Best Picture. So where's the love? Admittedly, Gondorf and Hooker doesn't have quite the same ring that Butch and Sundance does. For fans of old-timey con men and even older-timey music, nothing beats The Sting. Paul Newman's role was written for an overweight, over-the-hill slob, and was a minor character. Henry Gondorf was only in about half of David S. Ward's original screenplay and was intended to be an older, paunchier fellow, a sort of gruff mentor to Johnny Hooker, who was written as a 19-year-old. The producers were thinking of someone like Peter Boyle to play the role, but Newman loved the screenplay and wanted to play Gondorf no matter what. So Ward slimmed down the character and beefed up the role to fit Newman. Reuniting Butch and Sundance wasn't the no-brainer you'd expect. Separately, Robert Redford and Paul Newman were two of the biggest movie stars in the world in the early 1970s. As a duo, they were perhaps even more popular, with mega-hit Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid Fresh in people's memories. When the director of that film, George Roy Hill, signed on for The Sting, Redford soon followed. Then came Newman, as described above. But while a Butch and Sundance reunion sounded tempting and lucrative, the studio had a concern. In the movie, the two con men's partnership hinges on the possibility that one, or both, will try to double-cross the other. With Redford and Newman so famously chummy, Universal was concerned that audiences wouldn't believe such a betrayal was possible, and the film would thus lose some of its suspense. Hill assuaged their fears. The producer was sure it would win Oscars based on the screenplay alone. Michael Phillips, who produced the film with his wife, Julia, and Tony Bill, later told an interviewer, Believe it or not, I rehearsed my Oscar speech before we rolled our first shot. It was naive, even though it worked out that I won. Of course, none of what he had rehearsed made it into his Oscar acceptance speech, when I got up there, I just babbled. The screenplay that had given him such confidence won an Oscar, too. The ragtime score was terribly anachronistic, yet also contemporary, in a way. The Sting is set in 1936, by which time the Scott Joplin piano tunes that serve as its soundtrack, all written between 1902 and 1908, were no longer popular. But there was revived interest in Joplin's work in the early 70s, including a new recording of his catalogue by pianist Joshua Rifkin that became a million seller, quite rare for an album of classical music. A high-profile analysis of Joplin's work in the New York Times soon followed, and in 1976 the composer was awarded a posthumous Pulitzer Prize for his contributions to American music.